Good evening, uh, thanks for joining us back at the bird room. I'm Shane from Direct Bird Products. Um, for regular viewers, they will have probably already seen um, what I'm about to show you. But I've had a lot of questions over the last few weeks asking me about um, how to keep on top of mite and obviously the effects of mite um, throughout the breeding season. I did do a video on this uh, a while ago, but for some reason, one reason or another, it has been removed from YouTube. I've got my reasons why it could have been, but basically I'm just going to run through a couple of uh, shorter tips on, on what I do. And at the moment, in my bird room, I've not seen any mite whatsoever. So obviously something I'm doing is right. Not to say that the, uh, the mite won't come later on in the year, but most importantly, prevention is better than, than anything. Just trying to keep on top of things. Uh, before I do that, I was through for a, a couple of questions that we've had. Um, I did put this to you all. Um, would you rather me do questions as in one? Um, many of you said just do them as they come in, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'll start with a couple of questions first. Question is from uh, Graham Davies. Actually, I had a, another message today asking me pretty much the same question. As all of you know, I use... Um, one uh, sucker for dandelions and a lot of the um, the breeders I know still use dandelions as vigorously as what I do um, daily uh, my daughter picks them from the garden for me and, and we give them to the birds quite literally daily Just, there's no two ways about it as much as I can give them, as much as they I will give them the question is, is uh, you give your birds yellow uh, no seeds inside what is the advantage of this? Well. The advantage of giving them a, when they're in the flower form rather than the actual seed heads is firstly they, they've got something to pick at rather than just eating seed. It's easy enough to go out there and buy dandelion seeds because there's, there's plenty of places that sell it. But there's more vitamins and minerals in the flower form rather than just the uh, seed heads itself. It, it's just like anything, it's a fresh produce by giving them to that. And I have said this, not just the actual... Um, the, the head itself, the orange, yellow, whatever you want to call it, uh, the flower head, the actual stem, the leaves and the roots, goodness in everything. And if you take a look back at one of our previous videos, I do explain it in more detail on the vitamins and minerals that they do offer. But more vitamins and minerals on the old than the seeds itself. So I hope that answers that question. Next one is from Joseph Amosa, um, a regular viewer of ours. Thanks for watching, Joseph. Um, the question is, what's the best seed for soaking? Uh, he's currently soaking greenfinch seed, uh, as do I for the, the crossbows and the greenfinches. Um, and I've explained that also previously, why I do that, because it, it fills them up more for the bigger birds. Um, what I don't want to do is just have separate mixes for everything. So, a greenfinch mix, I just do a little bit uh, for the crossbills. Um, what is the best seeds for um, germination? Well mung beans, sunflowers, um, in the actual soak seed that we sell there is everything in there from red millet, grass seed, uh, black rape seed, lettuce seed, mung beans, the list goes on. Also like I said you can actually find that further back in one of our videos which every seed is on there uh, that is in our germination seed. I do know a lot of people do it differently. I actually seen uh, Paul Meeks um, video or explanation last night on Facebook um, on, on our, what so, uh, CD soaks, it's Niger and anyway I'm not going to go into that because that's Paul's way and it's working for him this way my seed works for me and I can't stress that enough if you find something that works, stick to it yourself um, so far as some seeds not germinating, some seeds just won't um, when, when seeds are processed from, from the field or the growers, some I've actually got additives on them to stop them from growing which is, is wrong so obviously we are feeding that to our birds but that's why some seeds won't as a landscape gardener by trade I've, I've tried this before from many a, a places where I've liked to uh, customers where they're wanting a bit of wild area so I've took various seeds with me thrown them down and, and tried to get them to germinate out there in the natural environment and, and they won't do it and that is why um, there is certain things on that do stop that from germinating further. 
But as the green finch seed, seed that I feed, um, I find it takes longer to germinate than the soak seed because they're the soak seed is stuff in there that actually germinates as a 24 hour period. I found with the greenfinch mix it does take up to 36 hours from start to finish. So that helps you out there. Um, I can't actually read this, this next name because my wife wrote it down uh, in the comments. So basically what it was asked, what treatment do I give my young separated birds? Um, different for different birds and I'll explain that uh, quite quickly. but. Um, so basically, the young canaries, um, anything that doesn't suffer from coccidosis, I mean, I will give them uh, some of that later on when I'm feeding the other birds, but I'll explain that in a second. But still, I'm just giving them um, the same as what I'm giving the parent birds, uh, Avigold Advance and Calcium. I don't switch things around from, from when they've weaned to going into the molt, especially for canaries for instance. Um, the Avigol Advance is full of vitamins and minerals, it's, it's a sort of tonic. Calcium, uh, I give it to the young birds, good for um, the bones, everything about it. Um, just remember that calcium is not actually just for eggs and, and for breeding hens, it's actually good for bone development. So we, we give it to our kids in, in a milk form, for instance, so birds need it the same, same type of thing. When it comes to the British side or native birds, greenfinches for instance, linnets, a lot of birds do suffer from coccidosis or going light as a lot of people know it. The main thing um, when the birds hit the molt, especially greenfinches, baycocks, um, various stages, uh, a lot of people do different dosages but I stick to the dose that works for me and that is a mil per litre, three or four days a week, uh, then the rest days off back on again until they finish the molt. So far as seed, as I've explained before, soak seed and egg food as I've been giving the parent birds, giving the weaning birds all the way through till they finish the molt, then just the standard hard seed um, through the winter period. But yeah, basically, um, same, same as what I've been giving them throughout. Uh, Sarah Bamford is the next question. Do I give liquid or uh, powder form in calcium? liquid only for me um, calcium form uh, is, is all I give my birds like I said grit charcoal all that type of stuff I still give them anyway especially the grit and cuttlefish does obviously uh, help with calcium but um, calcium form is a soluble calcium into the water yeah you, you might have to clean your water pots out um, more regularly than, than you would maybe twice a week instead of once a week but the birds are getting uh, the calcium into the system that way so Sarah it's uh, liquid form right so as I said um, what I'm going to do is just give you a, a quick um, rundown of mic control like I said we since putting this video up I think I put this video up and we had about three or four hundred subscribers now we're at over a thousand so a lot of you guys might not have actually seen what what I do to keep my at bay um, as I said before I I've been using s76 now no qualms with it whatsoever um, it's been working a treat but a while ago I had a, um, a chat with Paul Meek uh, I call him the medicine man because what Paul doesn't know about medicines and, and illness in birds is not worth knowing. He's very knowledgeable on, on them and on birds uh, in, in full anyway. And we were talking about S76 and, and what's in it. Then he mentioned moxidectin to me. Um, obviously it's a lot cheaper. And believe it or not, um, as I opened this one earlier, because like I said, I'm going to trial this before we start stocking it, um, just to show what it, if it's any good basically. Um, I only said, if, if it's any good, then we'll sell it. If it's not, then, then I won't. So before obviously I start saying, yeah, it's brilliant, I'm gonna try it myself. Moxidectin, so basically, it does smell exactly the same as um, the S76. That's probably due to the additives that's in it to, to sweeten it up uh, because basically um, S76 is ivermectin 
and obviously certain things added to to make sure that the birds administer it through the water because it's, it, it, the ivermectin is very sour as I'm understood. So um, like I said I've not used it as yet but from reading about it um, from what I can remember I mean I will run through all the instructions um, before when I reviewed it and when I actually tried it but it does say um, a gallon a gallon is eight pints to uh, four 0.5 litres of water so that's that's quite a lot of um, product and a lot of water but obviously once a month again it does actually say not to give um, young birds that got no feathers well young birds that got no feathers are not going to be drinking water anyway so not to worry about that but like I said I'll be trying this uh, instead of the S76 and just to see how we get on with that um, the other thing was, is uh, obviously what I did put on the original video is with the nests, um, with the nest, nest felts and what I do, um, basically the same again, I'm just going to quickly do this, so you see, carbolic soap, the video is in, um, in the previous videos. that's into the nest pan that'll help stick that and obviously keep a lot of nasties at bay because it's, it's medicinal so what they used to use I'm not going to go into all that because there is a separate video on uh, carbolic soap check it out if you haven't already seen how, how to prepare it and things like that um, so firstly do that let that set um, after that obviously you want to try and keep mite at bay as much as possible so uh, what I do next is get Vaseline all over the bottom I'll show you me doing that right Vaseline off petroleum jelly a lot of you are going to find this boring because you've already seen me do it but like I said this is for the uh, the new viewers uh, that have not had a chance to see this so basically just get your petroleum jelly it doesn't have to be any brand whatsoever uh, the cheaper the better it does a ten trick and just smear it all over the bottom of your nest pan because my if you should have any will stick to that I mean I think a couple of quid quid I don't even know it I know it weren't expensive for a tub but if you put that into context of the amount of birds you're gonna uh, save from my it's well worth doing I mean if it weren't brought to my attention that this video was not no longer on there I would have never even known so basically just on the bottom and that, as that sits in whether you're using external pans or or the ones I'm using it does exactly the same trick it doesn't affect the birds because all that area surface area underneath is never going to come into contact with birds now perching obviously at the, at the side of it there um, I do put it on the uh, the perch ends um, on the outside of the cage stop any mite from crawling down but basically uh, that's the nest side of things let me just dry my hands off right so like I said that's your Vaseline petroleum jelly whatever you want to call it as uh, a lot will be aware in the uh, the videos I've done I do explain how often I, I clean the birds out when they're on chicks everyone's different every time I clean them out put in uh, DE powder any type of mite powder you don't have to be mite powder it could be talcum powder ant powder I've, I've heard people use in the past but the most important thing is is the mite itself the, the actual shells on the mite are oily and what the powder does is stops all that basically dehydrates them and dries them up and it basically just does the trick in your corner of your cages um, it's not going to affect them but before um, I offer the birds the nesting material I'll also put some in the actual um, the powder in the bottom of the nest itself birds might even bath in it a, a dry bath with the powder it's not going to affect them whatsoever so yeah I mean it's as simple as that um, for I think for keeping on top of the mite in my shed, like I said, I've not seen any whatsoever. And 
lovely sight up there look feeding uh, four young fives you'll probably see that in another episode um, down here we've got uh, an end down here feeding a mixed nest which I'll I'll, I'll uh, take some shots of for the uh, future episode but yeah I mean that's the top and bottom of it um, there's no trickery involved it's just a matter of keeping on top of your controlling your mic because the last thing you want if you get mic basically your season is going to be destroyed before you know it mite and mice are the two biggest causes of failed years in um, in breeding season mite obviously suck the blood out of the young chicks and don't give them a fighting chance at all mice yeah that's a different story um, but yeah if you control your mite your breeding season is going to be so much better than it is I'm not saying you're not going to beat anything if you've got mic, but it's going to be a whole world of different if you keep on top of your mic. So yes, that's about it for today. Um, thanks everyone that has um, subscribed to the channel. And thanks Dean, Dean Walton and Kevin Bailey for your uh, donations to the channel. Kevin, um, your regular uh, viewer and, and thanks very much for watching. Dean, I didn't even know Dean had donated, he's, uh, he's sneaky like that, good friend of mine, in fact I consider all you guys um, who watch the channel friends to the channel so thanks anyway, um, but yeah keep in touch, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification bell for the uh, up and coming episodes and if you haven't liked the video and leave a comment on uh, things to do in future videos or if you've got any questions um, leave them in the comments below if you are needing any of your bird products I mean we do a wide range of things check our um, website out um, directbirdproducts.com or send us a message on Facebook um, directbirdproducts can't be simpler um, like I said most of you know exactly what to do now but easy enough to find us I mean my contact numbers on there and, and everything you need to know anyway thanks for watching enjoy the rest of the evening and I will see you soon